Why, hello there, friends. It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. And today, let's talk about wrist locks, specifically in the context of the unified rules of mixed martial arts. I put out a poll recently asking my viewers which of the following techniques is illegal under UFC rules. Wrist locks, breaking bones, kicking the knee, running away, or neck-breaking techniques. If you don't know, the answer is running away. What? Not to be confused with playing a defensive strategy and keeping distance between you and the other guy. A lot of smart Alex in the comments said, well, Israel Adesanya runs away and he doesn't get in trouble for it. No, no. He manages distance between himself and his opponent. Well, what about that one time Conor McGregor ran away from the other guy? No, no, no. That's putting some distance between the other guys so you can come back and fight. Running away falls into the category of timidity. Disengaging. Not being there to fight, not being there to do your job. If you literally turn your back and start sprinting away from the other guy to avoid the fight, to get out of there. When you show the referee you are not there to compete and you are trying to escape from the cage, that's a foul. So running away, if you don't know, great self-defense technique, bad combat sports technique. Now only 9% of you picked wrist locks. But the reason we're going to, going to talk about wrist locks today is because in the comments, the most vocal group were those insisting, no, 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 wrist locks are illegal in the UFC, and this is false. It's absolutely false, but it's based on a fundamental misunderstanding of the verbiage in the rules of MMA. Specifically, no small joint manipulation. But what you might not know is that small joints refer to fingers, not to wrists. Fingers and toes specifically, not to the wrist joint, not to the ankle joint. So wrist locks, totally fine. Toe holds, which is an attack on the ankle, even though it's called the toe hold, because you physically place your hand over the toes, totally fine. That's a valid technique. Ever seen that in MMA? Well, yeah, Frank Mir tapped out Tank Abbott with a toehold. A toehold from an omoplata setup, which was technically the first omoplata, although not omoplata finish in the UFC. But let's get back to wrist locks. So wrist locks are not small joint manipulations. Surprise! If you didn't know that, now you do. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering, who is this bozo telling, all me, th telling me all these things? Well... I've been a referee for the sport of mixed martial arts, adjudicating professional MMA fights for quite a number of years. I'm pretty well versed in what the rules are and what they're not. So, small joint manipulation once again refers to fingers, more specifically controlling two or one fingers, bending or twisting an individual finger or two fingers in an attempt to gain an advantage over your opponent. Holding on to three fingers, totally okay. Holding on to four, totally okay. Bending or twisting a single digit, no. That's called small joint manipulation. Wrist locks, totally fine. So why don't we see them more often in mixed martial arts? Well, for the simple reason wrist locks are low percentage techniques. Yeah. What does that mean? That means you've got to you have better options. You have far better options in an MMA fight in most positions. Probably the most successful position to set up a wrist lock from is full mount. It is. You're in full mount, you rain down some punches, the other guy puts his guard up here to protect himself, and look at that hand, it's open, if it's open, then wrist lock. But, in spite of the fact that that's probably the best position to set up a wrist lock, from in MMA, you still have way better options. For example, oh, drop some elbows on the guy. How do most MMA fights finish? TKO. That means one of the fighters is beating the other guy. He's beating him down in a position where he can no longer intelligently defend himself, and so the referee stops the fight. The most common form of TKO in mixed martial arts, two fighters are squaring up, they're standing up, they're throwing punches, one guy gets knocked down, the standing fighter chases the knockdown guy and continues to throw a barrage of punches where the other guy is still dazed and confused about what's going on, so the referee jumps in there and stops it before he gets seriously hurt. That's a TKO, a technical knockout. Technical because he's technically not knocked out, technically not unconscious, but he totally would be if the referee allowed that to continue. 
So wrist locks, not small joint manipulation. Why else do we not see them very much in MMA? Well, for the simple reason, MMA is a fist fight, and the number one defense against wrist lock, make a tight fist. If your hand is open and loose and relaxed, there are lots of different ways to wrist lock it. If your hand is in a tight fist, it's much harder to bend. Third reason, the gloves and the wraps. It doesn't make it impossible to wrist lock people. I've done it, but it does make it harder. It means you have to get that guy to compromise himself before you can get that wrist lock. It's not impossible to bend a wrist with a glove and a wrap on it. It's just harder, which makes an already low percentage te technique become a much lower percentage technique. So, wrist locks. Totally legal under UFC rules. Now you know, and now you know why you don't see them very often. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.